Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we're going to be looking at one of my favorite underdog game engines, and that is Flax. What you see in front of you, this is Flax Engine. This is Flax Engine 1.9. We'll get to the details of that in just a sec, but first, a little bit of an overview of Flax itself. So Flax is a kind of like a lightweight version of Unreal Engine. It's got very similar licensing in that it is a source available, not open source. It's You only pay them money if you make a fairly substantial amount of money yourself. Um, it has C++ as a scripting language option, but it also has C Sharp and their own built-in uh, visual scripting language. What you see in front of you, this is the Bistro demo from Lumberyard. Uh, they ported it over uh, just recently to work uh, and I think it's it's wonderful because this is available for a number of different game engines and it gives you ability to sh kind of showcase what the rendering capabilities of this engine are. Let's go ahead. We will run this scene so you get the rendered view, what the, what the shading looks like on it. Here is our scene of our Bistro. Notice the lighting, because that is one of the big things in this particular release. Let's go take a quick look inside of the Bistro. Get an idea of you know some of the, the way lights work. We've got new shadow mapping in this release as well. Uh, and yeah, so that is uh, 1.9 version of Flax Engine running the new Lumberyard Bistro ported example. Uh, in terms of what's actually new in this release, uh, one of the things is DDGI, which is dynamic. Um, diffuse global illumination. It is their global illumination system. You can see it in effect right now. Let's turn it off. So this provides like the secondary bounce lighting for open world type environments. Uh, and now I can go ahead and turn it back on. So DDGI turned on and you get an idea of the lighting that it provides. Uh, this is a really uh, cool game engine in a lot of regards. Uh, let's go ahead, we'll check out. So here's our camera, for example. And right now you'll see, this is how scripting is done. Scripts are attached as objects. You literally drag a script onto a scene or you come here and pick from the existing screens, uh, scenes that are out there. We'll go ahead and we'll edit the script and you'll see this particular one is using the C-sharp programming language. So if you're wondering what the programmability looks like, well, it looks like this. It's pretty straightforward. You override script and then you implement some methods. So on update or on fixed update, those are called every frame. Uh, and then you do your, your game logic in here. So this is the game logic for uh, moving the camera around the scene. Uh, then on top of that, uh, you have a typical composition based system. So you can add things on top of other things. You can add multiple components to an object. It'll be very comfortable standard to use kind of game engine. Again, in addition to C-sharp though, you also have C++ as an option with hot reload, which is actually a pretty cool new feature. And we got some other improvements to the 1.9 release, some things that are like just real quality of life. For example, if you have a list of items, for example, we have this script right here. Let's go ahead and add another script to this object. You now have these handles so you can order any list. So this will work on any list uh, that you have. Now the the visual indicator is in the wrong order. So you now have the ability to uh, visually um, reorganize any list that you work with, which is a nice feature to add. Uh, on top of that, I just find it really simple to work with. They've also done some things. Uh, so some of the improvements, the way things processed. So uh, when you import objects into the engine, it will be much faster, uh, which again is just a nice quality of life kind of improvement. So this was my quick hands-on with 1.9. Again, this scene you see is the bistro scene. I will go ahead and show you how you can go about grabbing that. But now let's go take a look at um, Flax itself and the 1.9 nine release specifically. So here we are at the homepage. Flax is available for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. The site is flaxengine.org. Uh, it's uh, in terms of features and functionality. Let's do a quick rundown of those features. So some of the cool things here are C Sharp and C++ scripting, in addition to visual scripting as well. Uh, you have, again, a number of graphics functionality that there. So asset streaming. You also have support for 64-bit precision. So if you want to make very large world, it's there. It has online services, including Steam, Xbox Live, and PlayStation Network. It is available. Uh, it can run on um, like the targeted game. It can run on Windows, Linux, Android, Mac OS, iOS, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Switch, and Xbox. So very mature in terms of the platforms it supports. It also, you can run the engine itself. The, the editing tools are on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. So that wasn't the case in the past. So now available on uh, pretty much all major development platforms, which is a nice step forward. And then we've got another uh, other cool features there. Terrain and 
fog and foliage built in, hot reloading of C-sharp and C++, uh, and so on and so forth. Very cool, mature game engine. Uh, in terms of the 1.9 release, uh, so we've got a number of improvements here. One of the new things here is video playback directly inside of the game. So you can actually add uh, a video player actor into your scene and play MP4 files, audio and video. You can even stream it from a URL if you wish. So if you have video playback in your game uh, that is now supported in 1.9, we have a number of rendering performance boost things, including uh, draw call sorting, asynchronous drawing, object batching, GPU object data, uh, and uh, shadow maps. Uh, we're going to get to back to shadow maps in just a second as well. Oops, I don't know what that was, but uh, we also have the uh, Bistro Scene Sample. I mentioned that earlier on. It is available on GitHub uh, and shows you how uh, Global SDF is implemented for that scene using uh, DDGI, the Global Illumination System there. Again, DDGI did get some improvements and is considered ready for production. Uh, so we've added new things here, such as a variable ray count per probe, meaning the GI probes outside the view frustrum or far from geometry or far from the camera. Use less rays, so obviously it's kind of like occlusion calling it just uses um, less resources if it's kind of way out of the way um, and then the improvements to the algorithms etc so you should be able to get realistic outdoor style lighting here again this is mostly for open world type scenes uh, so you wouldn't really use it if you just had an indoor scene you just use traditional lighting but for outside global illumination works wonderfully there uh, they again did make improvements to their shadow map support so they re-implemented uh, shadow mapping to use shared atlases uh, so we've got variable shadow resolutions, variable update rates, uh, separate static atlas for static geometry, shadowed lights in transparency, shadow light batching, and then as a result of some of this, better performance. So your shadow map generation should be nicer in this release. Another thing that they've done is added GPU-based mesh SDF generation. Uh, so this is when you first import a model. It is now generated on the GPU. The example they give uh, for cutting the computation down uh, is a 3.7 million vertices volume is... Uh, now generated in 160 milliseconds. I wish they had that before, so you could actually see what the speed increase was. Uh, but basically, importing objects into Flax Engine is really fast, especially if you come from something like um, the Godot game engine. You're going to find it just wonderful how fast this thing can can actually import in 3D objects. And thanks to this, it should be even faster. Uh, uh, missing references, debug improvements as well, improvements to the editor hierarchy. The grid has been replaced with a uh, texture and... Um, a quad that is drawn on it. So now the new grid system uh, should be faster and smoother than the old play, the old way of doing it using debug lines. Uh, you can now reorder lists with these controls as I showed you earlier on. Uh, and then we've got improvements to the UI in general, things like tool tips and descriptions. Uh, you can see the effects down there, nice integration into the documentation. Uh, you also have improvements to the search and filtering functionality. You can actually see a little bit of the uh, pr visual programming language that's available as well. And it's a pleasant language to work with. I actually do enjoy visual scripting with the Flax engine. Uh, on the topic of that visual scripting, they've also now got uh, editor options, contains a setting for line curvature that make them look straight. You see over here, uh, they've also added the uh, radial menu control. This is not in editor. This is available for your game. So if you're porting your game to like a platform that say is controller only and you need to remap keyboards to like um, say the D-pad or something, uh, you can use these radial wheels uh, to, to set up. So that radial, radial menu is a new control that's available directly inside of the engine for your own game. And then we have several other improvements to the engine as well. So that is a, the 1.9 release in a nutshell. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, the Bistro scene is available as well. This is a port of the Lumberyard Bistro scene. In terms of setting it up, what you want to do is basically clone this repository, and then you need to download the zip file here. The zip file is huge. It's like a uh, uh, five-ish gigabytes in size. The key thing you want to note is see the data folder. This, you put the files directly in there. So you're going to come in here. You're going to grab the file right here and download that. So this will have all the stuff in a zip, but it will be in a subdirectory. Make sure you copy the contents of that subdirectory from the zip. So don't put the subdirectory in, put the contents of it in. So the end result should look, oops, should look like this. So in your data folder, the files should be there directly, and then you're good to go. In terms of the licensing of this guy, uh, again, it is similar to Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine does, you have to pay a royalty after the first million. Uh, these guys do a 4% royalty after you release for uh, any earnings that you exceed over $250,000 per calendar quarter. So um, January, February, March, that's a quarter. Uh, April, May, June, and then June, July, August, and so on. Uh, so if you... Um, 
oh, I guess I'm missing a month on each one of those quarters. <laughs> There's four months in a quarter. But you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, that uh, if you exceed over $250,000 in those particular that time segment, uh, you, you have to pay them uh, 4%. So a very reasonable uh, license. It is free for uncommercial and educational use as well. So even I, I don't know how you would make a bunch of money in uh, that environment. So that should be an unimportant thing. Uh, on top of that, the source code is all available. It is source available, not open source. Just definitely one of those things you want to know about. And the source code is hosted up on GitHub. Uh, and yeah, here you can see very actively under development. Uh, it's got a good community forming around it, actually. So this is mostly the work of this fellow right here. Uh, but there are a number of other people contributing to it as well. Sort of like Unreal Engine has a ton of contributors, even though you know Epic Games ultimately runs it. In terms of the, the engine itself, it's an equal split between C Sharp and C++ in terms of code. And yeah, that's it. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Flax game engine. Flax is, again, my favorite underdog game engine out there, I think. It's just one of those ones that it just kind of blows your mind with how much it's actually capable of doing. Now, it's not going to come even close to feature parity with like Unreal or Unity, uh, but it has a lot in common with those engines in a more stripped down version. And I think what you're going to find for a lot of people, it has the functionality you need. And sometimes that lack of complexity is actually a selling point. So anyways, Flax Engine, uh, Flax Engine 1.9 just released. I'm curious, have you checked out this engine and what did you think of it? Are you thinking about checking it out? Let me know in the comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.